Good morning everyone and welcome back to the S79 sewing studio. So today I've got a great project for you. We're going to be making an advent calendar. It's a super simple and quick advent calendar so you still have time to get it made up before the 1st of December. Okay, so um, to make this project you're going to need to choose the fabric for your outer, so the background fabric, and for that you need two pieces 20 inches by 20 inches. You then need four pieces of fabric which is going to make up the strips that form the pockets so these particular pieces are six inches by 16 inches and these will make up the strips that we have for the pockets you then need three small pieces which are five inches by three inches and these will be the tabs that go across the top if you want to make a bow um, or any extra little add-on bits obviously you need a little bit more fabric also, don't forget, you do need some numbers for your advent calendar. I actually made this tutorial um, a couple of days ago um, and completely forgot at the end of the tutorial that I needed numbers. Um, now, I've picked up a packet of numbers. These were £2 from Hobbycraft. Um, they're self-adhesive and the sticky is quite strong. So these are quite good, but I could only find them in red. You could also write on tags and stick them on. Um, there's lots of ways of putting your numbers on, but I thought this was quite a simple and easy way to do it. Okay, so we're going to begin with the pocket sections. So we've got four of these and we're going to do the same thing to each of them to construct the pockets. So first of all, you're going to fold the fabric in half. Now my fabric hasn't got a right and wrong side, um, but you're going to fold them so that it's right sides together and so that the outside facing you is the wrong side. And we're just going to pin around just to make sure that those edges are all lined up and now we're going to stitch all the way around the edge of this rectangle it's important that we leave a small gap for turning the pocket the right way around so I'm going to put some double pins in where I'm going to leave my gap so I'm not sure how clearly you can see this but I've left about a 10 centimeter 4 inch gap between these two pins which I'm going to leave unstitched so I'm going to stitch all the way up here I'm going to stitch to the first double pin and stop start again here stitch all the way to the end and stitch all the way down and we're just going to use a standard straight stitch for this with a one centimeter seam allowance Just trim off the ends of thread and do the same for all four piece pocket pieces. Okay, so we now have um, the four pocket pieces stitched around the edge with the right sides on the inside and the wrong sides on the outside. So now we're going to clip the corners just so that we get a nice neat edge. Depending on how much your fabric frays, um, don't go too close to your stitching. Um, you don't want to end up poking a hole through your um, pockets. Okay, so when we clip the corners, we're just taking a diagonal snip off and obviously where it's folded, just a little snip to the corner. Okay, gather all these into my floor bin. Okay, so now we're going to turn each of these pockets the right way out. So. Okay, so I've got the end of a crochet hook, so not the hook end, the other end, and it's quite good for pushing corners out because it's quite blunt. You don't want anything too sharp. Right, there we are. So you should have something that looks like that, and obviously you've still got the opening there, which we're going to seal up soon. Do the same with all of them, turn them all the right way around and poke all the corners out. There we are. So we have all four pocket pieces um, cut out and we're going to now press them flat. With the iron, not with your hands. Okay, so when you are pressing your pieces flat with this opening still open, just make sure that it's all the same distance all the way along your piece so that, so that the seam allowance is still turning into the inside.
There we are. And that's all pressed in place. Um, and the open end is there, but the seam allowance is pressed back. So do the same with all four pieces. And we're just checking that they're all the same length as they should be. Perfect, excellent. Okay, so now you have the four strips pressed flat. Um, now I've chosen to do this particular one in um, a hessian, which is gonna look great, it's gonna look rustic, um, but it does fray quite considerably. So if you do have something that's fraying, um, obviously putting fusible interfacing on the back will help to stop that. But the other thing you can do is just run a row of zigzag stitches or if you've got an overlock, just overlock the edges and it'll just keep it from fraying while you're working with it. Okay then, so that's just going to help um, whilst I'm dealing with it. Okay then, so back to um, the pocket pieces. I'm going to sew a row of top stitches along the top folded edge, which is going to be the edge that we go into to get the sweetie out. Um, it's folded anyway, um, but I think it just looks nicer if it has a row of top stitches. And you can do your top stitching in a colour that matches, so you can't really see your stitches, or you can opt for a contrast colour stitch just along the top edge of your pocket. So when you top stitch, you want to be stitching about three millimetres away from the edge. Okay, so if you can see that, there's a row of top stitches along that upper edge. Leave the rest of it at the moment because we're going to stitch that down in place onto the background. So just top stitch along the top edge on all of them. So next we're going to mark positioning on this background piece. So take a ruler or a tape measure or something like that. We're also going to need either a marker pen, um, not a marker pen, <laughs> don't use a marker pen, um, either a Frixon pen, although it can leave a small white mark so do be careful because we are drawing on the front of it. Alternatively, use a pencil, very, very faint, or some chalk. So uh, I'm going to start off by marking the half an inch seam allowance, which I have along the bottom. So I'm going to measure half an inch and do a mark. And I'm going to measure half an inch and do a mark. There we are and just join these up with a line. This is going to be where your seam is, so this won't be seen at all. We've got another... Okay, so with the um, seam line marked at the bottom, I'm just going to take my um, background piece and fold it in half like this, just to mark the centre point and take a pin and just mark the centre. I think mine will hold a fold, but if not, then put a press line in it. You can press it out later. So you can see that, I can see my center mark all the way down there. So I have my seam line at the bottom. I have my center mark going up the piece of background. I'm now going to mark two inches up from this seam line. So we have two inches up and put a mark and two inches up and put a mark, okay. Next, I need to place the pocket piece on. So just to make sure it's all central, I'm just going to fold that in half and mark the, whole, the halfway line. So this halfway line will fall on top of the background halfway line. There we are. So halfway onto halfway, and it's going to sit two inches up from the seam, li seam line on those markers that I've just put. So just making sure it's all nice and straight. And once you're happy with it, the stitches are at the top. So the stitches that we've just made are at the top. The rest of it's not stitched yet. So just pin this in place once you're happy with the placement. Right, at this point, stitch all the way down. So where you haven't stitched already. So on this particular one, we have the stitches across the top that we made before that they all have. And then we're going to stitch along the side seams and all the way across the bottom and at the side seams and stop. Be sure when you start and finish on these upper end pieces that you do a few stitches forwards and backwards. You don't want it coming undone at the edges. And again, at the corner, pivot round and stitch all the way along the bottom, removing the pins as you go. So the first pocket piece at the bottom of the advent calendar is in place. Obviously it's one great big long pocket. We're going to measure 
placement of the next one. So again, take the next one, fold it in half, make sure that you mark out your center points. There, center points marked. Obviously still have the center point fold that I put in and I'm just going to measure one inch up from this edge. So from this point here, I'm just gonna measure one inch off my chalk. There we are, and put a mark and one inch up from this one and put a mark. Okay, place. So again, take this one, line it up with the two marks that you've just made and position it so that the two pins center are on the fold that you made earlier and make sure it's sitting nicely on those lines. Once you're happy, pin it in place. Okay, so with all the pocket pieces in place, you now need to measure the length of your finished pocket piece. So mine is measuring 36 centimetres. Um, so we need to divide that between six because we have six pockets. So each pocket on mine is going to be six centimetres. Quick maths. <laughs> so there we are. I'm going to put a mark on each one at six centimetres. And then I'm going to do the same on the top one. Okay, and with all of your marks in place, line up the top and bottom and draw lines only on your pockets all the way down. These are going to be stitch lines, so um, just make sure that whatever you're using um, is either faint or will disappear with either water or with um, the steam from the iron. And just try to keep everything really neat and straight, but don't worry too much if one of your pockets ends up being a little bit bigger, it adds to the um, rustic effect of it. So there you can see each of my pockets marked, um, marked out with a white line. So I'm just now going to stitch down each one of these, just to divide up the um, pockets. Just remember at the, the top of each pocket, we make sure you do a forwards and backwards. You should always do a forwards and backwards couple of stitches um, every time you start and every time you stop. Just locks your stitches in place and stops them coming undone. Okay, so um, pockets are all stitched. We have individual pockets um, for each of our chocolates or whatever we want to put in them. Um, I've used um, chalk, you can still see the mark, so that's why you need to make sure you use something that will disappear. Um, I'm just gonna give mine a blast of steam just so that those lines disappear. So we'll just give them a quick blast. There we are, and we're all done. So that's looking good. Okay, so um, we have all the pockets in place. So now it's time just to attach the three little hanging loops that we've got at the top, which you can hang over a dowel or um, even a, a stick you find in the forest or something, or in the woods. <laughs> um, let's take these three pieces that we saved earlier. These, remember, were three inches by five inches. And what we're going to do is, with the right sides together, going to fold them over and stitch down this end here. Okay, just gonna pop some pins in. 
to hold it all in place. Okay, and we're going to, we can leave, leave the ends open um, for turning them through. So I'm doing a one centimetre seam allowance. Um, So there we have the little loops um, that we've made. These are going to be our hanging loops and we just need to turn them now the right way around. So for that I'm going to get my bodkin. So I'm going to use um, a bodkin and um, if you've watched my other videos you'll have seen me use this before. So it's like a pair of tweezers but with a disc that holds them clamped shut. So I'm going to do this by dropping the bodkin inside the tube and then just pushing a little bit of the fabric into the top of the tube and I can feel the disc so I'm pushing it closed and then I can start pulling the, the tube inside out so the right way out <laughs> not inside out it's already inside out so start pulling this down if you've got thick fabric this might be a little bit tricky um, the fabric I'm using is quite thick and frays quite a lot so I'm just going to go carefully there we are take the bodkin off and there we have the loop put through so we're going to do that with all three of them if you don't have a bodkin to hand um, I appreciate not everybody's got one um, then you can use a safety pin just make sure when you do attach it to the top that you attach it a little way down not right to the edge otherwise it will just fray and pop off there we are so this is a little bit fiddly it's easier if you use a thinner fabric alternatively one of the things you could do is just use some ribbon so if you've got some wide sort of one inch ribbon um, then you could just cut strips that length and obviously they would still make nice hanging loops so if you'd rather use ribbon then obviously this will save this part of the of the project i'm going to stick with this because i've decided that's what i'm going to do There we are, so we have all three, just need to now press them flat um, and I'm going to press it so that the seam allowance is somewhere on the back, so that the seam allowance will be on the back there and then we will use the front and have it going up and over like that. Just press that in place. So with the join, the seam join on the top, just going to press that down. Same with that one. And the same with that one. There we are. So you can either at this point leave these exactly as they are and we'll use them like that. Obviously if you use ribbon that's exactly how we'll be doing it. Um, I'm just going to top stitch just to bring tie it all in with the top stitching we've done here. Um, just about three millimetres from each edge just to give it a nice crisp look. So just a straight stitch, like I say, about three millimetres from the edge all the way down on both sides. And there we are. So top stitch down. It will just secure it and keep it nice and flat. So next we're going to take this so this is the top edge this is my top edge I'll turn it around for the camera so this is the top edge and this is the bottom okay so we're going to take these pieces and we're going to put them along here so the first one I want it to be in line with all of my pockets just to add a bit of strength so make sure that they're nicely lined up with the raw edge there and pop a pin in that and then the middle one is going to go in the middle. So again, turn it so that you have the right side of your piece on the outside. And I'm going to pop that where the center piece is. 
So that's going to go in there. It's the centre pin, not piece. <laughs> okay, so last one, again, I'm going to put it in line with these. And you can measure it all. Um, I'm just going to go by eye and pin that in place. So now it should look something like this. And we need to attach the back. So before we attach the back, um, I'm just going to stitch these down. Um, so I'm going to stitch about five centimetres from the edge and do a forwards and backwards a few times. This is what's going to hold your advent calendar onto the stick or onto um, a dowel or something. So you want it to be strong. When it's fully laden with chocolate, you don't want it falling down and the dog eating it. So just uh, secure these stitches. Right, so just a straight stitch, again, close to the raw edge, but just making sure it anchors these down. And there we are. So these are all in place now. So I'm now going to take the backing piece. So this is the piece that will be on the back of my project to hide all these uh, tatty ends that I don't trim. So we're now going to place this on top so that the right sides are together. And quite simply, stitch all the way around. Remember, we need to leave a small gap for turning the whole advent calendar the right way around. So I'm going to flip this over. There's no need to worry about being neat on this side. All of this will be hidden. And just make sure that we're all nicely lined up. The reason I want to sew from this side is because I can see where all of my stitching is the zigzag stitching. I want to make sure that I stitch this side of it so that you don't see any of this on the outside. I also want to make sure that the lines where I attached the hooks, um, not hooks, <laughs> where I attached the loops, um, I want to make sure that again, I stitch this side of it so that they're in the seam allowance for strength. So first things first, I'm going to double pin along the bottom to remind myself to leave that gap. So depending on how thick your fabric is, depends on the sort of width of the gap that you want to leave. I'm gonna leave a good sort of eight inch gap. Um, and I did that by eye, so it may not be exactly eight inches, but it's a decent sized gap because my fabric is thick and it will make it turning much easier. So if I hold this up, you can see the pins at the bottom this is where my gap's going to be. So I'm going to start stitching here. I'm going to stitch all the way around, all the way around and finish here. Again, pivot at the corner. So with your needle down, you can pivot the fabric round. So you go a little bit more actually. Now I'm sewing the top edge, which has got the loops in it. So just make sure as you go over the loops that they um, are nice and straight down. They should be at right angles to this seam. Just make sure they haven't become twisted. So we've stitched all around the outside and just left a gap at the bottom um, in which we're going to turn it the right way out. Reaching in, carefully pull it out. There we are. And we can just see the tabs coming out now, there, like that. So I'm just going to reach into the, to the project and just make sure that these corners are coming out nice and pointy. Right, so there we are. All the corners are out. And there is my advent calendar. Looks really nice and rustic, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, the fabric's looking good together. So the next thing that we need to do is 
I'm just going to trim off any sort of loose threads that have worked their way out. There we are. So I'm going to press this down just to get it nice and square. And then we need to just pop, we need to just fold this, this open edge inwards and stitch, top stitch, all the way around the edge of the whole project. So first of all, press it flat. So I'll just use this little tiny sleeve ironing board um, just to show you how we're gonna do it now. Just be careful when you come to press that you haven't got some sort of fold um, going on there. You really want this seam allowance to be right out. And if you need to, with the bottom still open, you can obviously push this outwards. really pleased with how that's looking so last piece to do is this bottom piece here and at the same time i'm going to turn both of these sections in and steam it flat so let's just turn those in first Ta -da! okay so what i'm going to do now just to hold it all nice and flat is i'm going to top stitch in the same way that we did on the pockets I'm going to top stitch all the way around the edge, um, about three millimetres, as usual, from the, the edge. It will also, in doing this, it will also close up this opening that we've just pressed in. So I'm going to start at the bottom. And there we are. So that's the advent calendar finished. Um, all that's left to do now is to um, attach these numbers. So I've obviously got these, as I mentioned earlier, um, from Hobbycraft, if you're in the UK. Um, I think they were two pound. Um, and what's good about these is that they're self-adhesive and the adhesive, I've already tested on my sample um, that I made earlier, um, and it's actually quite strong. So um, they'll hold quite well without um, having to glue it down or stitch it down, but obviously if, it doesn't stick as well to your fabric you may want to use a little bit of glue as well um, or even stitch it down um, but I think it'll be fine with just the adhesive at the moment so I'm just going to go ahead and stick these on in random spots all over the advent calendar I'll speed this bit up and there we are so I've stuck all of these self-adhesive numbers down the advent calendar is finished um, it just needs a little bit of decoration obviously it looks fairly plain it's holding nice and strong because of the extra layers of interfacing oh excuse me extra layers of interfacing anyway uh, so this is obviously all finished and if you want to keep it nice and simple then this is fine um, I've just made a quick bow which I will show you how to make these as a separate tutorial because these can obviously be used all year round for like bows in your hair or, or whatever. But this I think will look quite nice at the top of my advent calendar. As I say you can decorate it however you wish but I've made this bow and I'm just going to pop it down a little bit and stitch it in place. So I just stitch this here to hold everything in place. So there we are, that's the bow in place. Just make sure it's all sitting nicely. Okay, so the bow is in place and I think that is lovely. Obviously, if you want to put more decorations onto your advent calendar just to jazz it up a little bit, make it a little bit more festive, then do so. Um, I've got a piece of dowel here, it's way too long, but I don't have a saw in the studio. So uh, just to show you the effect, just thread it through all of the little loops and there we have it so just ready to stuff with chocolates unfortunately I don't have any spare chocolates but I could pinch one from my other advent calendar just to show you we pop them in there and they take a little sort of one of those little sweeties so get making these don't take long at all so thank you for watching um my tutorial today apologies this tutorial came a few days late um if you're interested in 
bow making I'm going to do another tutorial showing you um, how to put together a simple bow which obviously you can use to decorate this or any other projects that you make please like and subscribe lots more tutorials coming and I shall see you again soon thank you for watching